Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl, Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. All right, we coming in. We're going to run this real quick because we are a little bit behind. Bel Air, Season 1, Episode 7, Payback Southern. Yeah, man. Baby, they they play it with they were, they are playing with our emotions. I don't like the way that this skit is going. But I'm loving it though, man. Yeah. Each episode just keeps getting better and better. I'm just mad that we not getting this backstory on Jeffrey, man. That's what I said. I'm like, ever since Jeffrey became the assassin at our eyes, he just does these pop ups. Yeah. And we don't see much of him. I need you to answer some questions. Yeah. Like we need to know how you did it. Who you got to do it, or did you do it yourself? And that's kind of why we don't see you as much. Right. Like, what's going on? <laughs> Let's get into it. Man, so we started off, man, this episode, of course, from last week. We know that Fred is running against Phil now. So, uh, Fred tells Lisa, uh, you just need to back off of Will until this campaign is over. And Uncle Phil tells Will, hey, you need to back off Lisa because you know if you get too close. You start it, revealing your secrets. You, yeah, you're going to reveal your secrets. And we know that we can't let that cat out the bag because mm -hmm. it's going to mess it up for all of us. Isn't that something though? Yeah. When you, it's almost like when you're little and, you, and there's a family dynamic going yeah. on <laughs> that you are part of the problem. Or part of the solution. Right. So you have to be kind of like coerced. And when you go over your auntie house, don't you say nothing about it. Don't you act like you hungry because I don't need them talking about yeah. me. <laughs> they don't think I ain't feeding you. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Will and Lisa did not listen to them. Of course. So they need to, because Will is supposed to tell Carlton that, hey. We've been me, seeing yeah, each other. Yeah, we've been seeing each other and then we want to be a, a, a couple and he have not done that. And I'm like, come but on. But how is he going to do like, come that? on, Will. Like, for real. Like, they legit just got on an even playing field on right. the last episode. Right. So how in the world are you going to tell somebody that let their guards down <clears throat> and is actually going to embrace you mm -hmm. as their cousin that, hey, by the way, I know we good. We in a good place right now. I'm ready to buck <laughs> your girl or your ex-girl yeah. or the girl you told me to stay away from. You know, that part. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm, I'm crossing over the line a little bit. That's nasty, Will. But at the same time, we know how it go. Yeah. Also, in this episode this week, we see that Carlton is finally seeing Connor oh, for the yeah. motherfucker he is. Right. And <laughs> they was playing the cross, and Carlton was off his game. And Connor comes out his mouth and be like, Let, this is at least one sport that y'all can't, can't, can't take from us. And so Carlton decides that, hey... Uh, the coach told him that he need to need to scrimmage with the team to get his game back on point. And Connor went and hit him and uh, broke his wrist. That's a good. And now the whole school is against him. So now the roles is being reversed. Where when Will came to Bel Air, everybody was right. uh, giving him the cold shoulder. And now everybody's going Carlton the same way. And Carlton was like, man, I am so sorry. Being this being in this position. This ain't sucks, fun. Sucks, man. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm finally, I'm finally glad that Carlton is seeing Connor for who the fuck he is. Yeah, and of his works. Right. So Will decides in order to cheer Carlton up from all this stuff that's happening to him, he said, I'm, we're going to throw a party at your house. And because in Philly, I could throw a mean party. I said, you ain't in Philly no more, baby. But Carlton was like, this sounds like a good idea. But you got to make sure that these people ain't going to come and tear up my house because Hillary had a party when she graduated and she almost burnt down a guest house and she was grounded for six months. He was like, I can't I, go through yeah, this. I don't need to be grounded for six months. I'm dealing them. with enough skit right now on my own. I, I feel you on that one, Carlton. Yeah. <laughs> and then on the flip side, Carlton was like, who am I going to invite? Because all of my friends are part of the lacrosse Cross team. team. Yep. And they, I'm on the outs with them. So Will's like, I'll show you. I got this. I got peoples I could call. I got a new social circle that you can network with. It's going to be all to the yeah. good. I said, I want to see this. Yeah. I want to see this. Got to see this. <laughs> so finally, it's time for the party. And Carlton is still not himself yet because he's like, ain't hard and nobody's here. So mind you, Uncle Phil is supposed to be the one chaperoning this party, right? right. We'll, get to, <laughs> we'll get to why he's not there. So we have um, Hillary over there supposed to be chaperoning the yeah. party. So in the midst of that, we realize that Lisa's there. Wait a minute. Didn't like, we just... Your daddy yeah. told you you ain't supposed to be there. Ain't supposed to be talking to Will. Not supposed to be at the bank's house. And, right. and here you are. <laughs> 
in all your glory. She said, well, technically, I'm not lying because I said I was going to be with my girlfriend. And she right there. So technically, <laughs> I'm not lying. So I'm like, at this point, this is going to go really bad. Because why is Will and Lisa this close? Yeah. The entire time. And they're talking about, so we, we can't let anyone see, see us. us. But like... You out in the open, bruh. <laughs> Everybody sees you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Trying to figure this skit out. And they, and they started kind of pissing me off because I'm like, Will, you doing this party for your cousin so y'all can be on good terms and kind of help him get out of his little funk. Yeah. But you still messing with his girl when you know that's a major trigger for him, man. Right. But love is a song beat sometimes, man. Yeah, ain't it? Loving you is wrong. I don't want to be around. <laughs> so Will came up with this this grand scheme of an idea that he was going to set Carlton up with someone that he could mesh well with. Yeah. We saw him and the girls sitting. I think it was Aisha, Aisha, something like that. But they started off really, really well. Really good. Yeah. And I really, she reminds me of Gemma from The Shy. Yeah, she do. Yeah. So they started off, you know, kind of on this ground of where it seemed to me. This girl was able to kind of pull Carlton back into black culture, yeah. back into the black side, because Carlton was not understanding why he was on the outs and why he didn't have any black friends. And this girl was telling him straight up. I mean, she was hitting him where yeah, it hurt, yeah, she did. and she didn't care about how he felt. You've never even put yourself in a position to get to know any of us. Right. You've gone to all the white events. All of the white sports. You play lacrosse. You play lacrosse. You like NASCAR. Yeah. And, and in Colton's defense, he was like, I can't help what I like. But she said, so you can't you can't be mad when we don't embrace you because you've never been to any one of our events. Yep. Anything that is close and near and dear to us, you haven't made yep. yourself to be a part of. So he kind of looked at her and gave her the... Oh, this ain't this ain't what it is. And he walked away. And yeah, I said, he was pissed off. I was like, this was a good opportunity for you to... <clears throat> Okay, maybe I do get it. Because at the end of the day, this is, like like James said, this is when you get on your soapbox. It doesn't matter who your friends are. It doesn't matter what side of the tracks you're on. It doesn't matter what interest you are in. Right. When it comes to who really has your back, 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 this instance right here shows you. You could be walking with these kids since high school, no, since middle school, elementary right. school, in the moment that you don't do or act the way they want you to act. Oh, you on out? You're on out? Yeah, you on out. And it's going to turn racial immediately. Right. So that's why we saw that Carlton kept on getting this text from this guy named John. They're like, hey, I'm in the game room. Yeah. Come on to the game room. And She's I like, said, this sounds sus. Okay. So he goes to the game room and... The lacrosse team. The, the, cro the lacrosse team is there. He was like, I wouldn't expect it for you guys. To be here. He was like, and then he turned around and Connor was there. And I said, And he was oh, like, what you doing here, Connor? And you supposed to be getting high off your bike today? Yeah, yeah. I said, first of all, from one drug addict to another, this ain't funny. Right. <laughs> like, you you can't be the one making jokes about biking it. So, John, John was the one that invited Connor because John was like, y'all need to squash this BS. Y'all boys, we need, to, we need to squash this. And Carlton was like, yeah, we can squash this once you apologize for all the racial slurs that you've been throwing at me. And not only me, everybody. The Asians, the yeah, Mexicans. Right, yes, yeah. <laughs> so Connor was like a, I didn't expect to be out in front of everybody. About yeah, because everybody was looking at him too. <laughs> yeah, so. And even in that, he still wouldn't apologize. I'm talking about this is BS and this is a weekend party. Hey, we're going to go. Y'all yeah. y'all can come with me. See, this is what I'm talking about. See, people like that, whatever they do, they know that at the end of it, forgiveness is always on their side. Yeah. Until right now. Yep. Because he thought that the Asian guy, the Spanish, all of them was going to still follow him, even yep. though you were just outed for making racial slurs against, against their them. community. Yeah. He really thought that, um, kind of reminds me of somebody that was in administration a few years ago. But anyway, um, <laughs> no matter what they do, it's all forgiven. Yeah. Boom. Here it is. But I'm glad that old boy was like, oh, no, I'm staying, I'm here, staying here at I'm... this party. I said, yeah. okay. <laughs> but our uh, old girl was over in the corner. I said, mm -hmm. Uh-huh. I saw him checking corner. She was like, mm-hmm. You're getting your black card back, uh -huh. bro. <laughs> Say, you invited to the real cookout. Yeah. <laughs> the one that don't have no pool. <laughs> now, this is where the rubber meets the road at the party. 
Lisa and Will goes to his room because she needs to charge her phone. And just like Uncle Phil told him that when somebody you love, you don't want to lie to them. You're going to want to open up and tell them the truth. But if you have to lie to them and they find out, it's going to hurt them. Yep. And why the first thing Lisa was like, tell me all your tell secrets. Tell me all your secrets. And you can see Will getting nervous. And he was like, go first. So she told him, you know, all her secrets and her truth. Beulah. And, yeah, that her name is Beulah. <laughs> they named you after a church. Beulah Baptist Church. He said, wait a minute, Beulah? <laughs> she was like, yeah, my name is Beulah. He said, Beulah? Yeah. So when it came time for Will's turn, I said, don't do it. He had to lie. And I'm like, we know right now it's going to come back to bite him because through that, she gave him the draws. Yes, indeed. Because the phone was already charged <laughs> yeah. up. And she was like, well, maybe we should just stay up here. No, later in the bed, talking about something. He was like, we can't go back from this, you know. She was like, maybe I trust you. I said, oh, no. Yeah. no. <laughs> He's like, there it is. So, so when it comes out, it's only going to be worse. And I thought that Carlton was going to pop in Yeah, we kept on saying Carlton's going to come. So we see that Carlton eventually start looking for Will. Like, Andy, anybody seen Will? So he was headed upstairs to go see if Will was in the room. But you could see that he knew that Will was with Lisa. Uh -huh. He knew it. And so he said he saw that Motel 6 light on. <laughs> so when he was on his way upstairs, the police came in and was like, who is who um who house is this? And Carlton was like, this is my house. And, they, and of course, we knew that they wasn't going to believe him. So by this time, Will looks out the window and he see the lights. He was like, oh, skip the cops here. I got to go down. And Lisa was like, I'm coming with you. And Will was like, no, 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 no. Your father going to know you lied if you go down there. But she knew. But she was like, no, nah, I got to help you. So she had to end up calling Fred in order to get them out of that. But I was like, thank God that she that she had that connection because Carlton's aide was going to jail. Yeah, because they found drugs. Because Carter yeah. was the one who sent the cops over, over there. there. Because yep. he sent him a text to say, you're about to have some more um, guests at your party. Right. So I was like, right there, there Carl, um, Carlton, you should have known. You've been doing this boy for five yep. You know how he moves. He always setting people up. Yep. So you should have known, like, get this stuff. But at the end of the day, what they found on him, he has a prescription for. Exactly. But he was black first. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And even in his own home, don't step another, don't come towards me another step. Yeah. I'm like, what the Like, come on now. Yeah, it was yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's when Carlton saw, because they had to, you know, take the walk of shame down the stairs. Even though they rescued Carlton. He know that they was up there doing something. Exactly. So I'm like, they go their relationship them been spun backwards again, man. <laughs> it's gonna spun backwards, but also this is gonna fall back on Uncle Phil. Yeah. Because although it's unofficial, it's not ah, on the record. Ah, yeah. That Fred knows now that there were drugs at Uncle Phil's house. The person he's running against. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Can't make this up. Yeah, man. It might get blowed over a little bit because his daughter was there. Yeah. So you can't really tell the truth without telling the whole truth. Yeah. But yeah. at the same But you can yeah. But he's gonna, he he gonna, gonna spin it against Uncle Phil. He's gonna spin it against him. He's gonna spin it against him. Spring it all over him. <laughs> now that we're done with this hair party. <laughs> Uncle Phil will mess around and they'll spend some cash pay money. Yeah. That um Aunt Viv ain't doing nothing about. Yeah. We got an old boy over because there. Because it, it was in my account. Because it's in my account. I'm like, bro, that's the wrong thing you can And Dwayne say. Martin. I'm going to call him Dwayne Martin. Yeah. Because he <laughs> buck with the name they gave him. It's Dwayne Martin to me. Was like, uh, that's what your, that, that was your comeback? Your money? Your bank account? Like, Under Viv is pissed. Pissed. Like, this set the wheels in motion for a whole lot yeah. of her pissed. Right. This entire episode. Yeah, because he ended up spending campaign money and then asking her for permission after. <laughs> what they say, we rather ask for permission than forgive. We rather ask for forgiveness, forgiveness than permission. permission. <laughs> so now, when I told y'all, remember I said Uncle Phil was supposed to be the one chaperone at the party. She don't hit him with the, oh, I'm getting ready to go out of town. I'm going to an art event. Yeah. When what? In so many words, she hit him with his own words like, I'm gonna tell you, and but not ask for your permission to do yeah. so. <laughs> that's so, how we, that's how we doing it now, so, right? So that's how we doing it now. So I'll see you in a couple of days when I come back from the event. I said, oh. But the other funny part was when uh, the way Martin was telling her that this campaign money was an investment, <laughs> and she was like, okay, so how much are you putting up your money on this investment? He said, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Ain't that like people? You got all these good ideas, but ask you to pull up some money? I'm on a fixed income. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Uncle Phil, so uh, Aunt, Aunt Viv ended up going to the art event, and Uncle Phil ended up following her because Jeffrey done <laughs> finished his research and was like, I know that you trust your wife. And she's to be trusted. Yeah, she'd be trusted. But the one you should be not trusting is, is Reed. Reed. And hands him a photo. I was like, wait a minute, this ninja got a rap sheet? <laughs> what, what, what we find over here? I know you don't drop kids out of windows see underneath people's beds and yeah. stuff. But what else? What else is there to find? <laughs> so then we see Aunt Viv and Reed talking. And of course, he always freaking pumping her up. Talking about how wonderful her art is, and she just loving the way she feels I mean, about them. Gushy. But, and then Uncle Phil pops up. <laughs> but at the same time, I was like, okay, Aunt Viv, you acting nervous. Now, every time yeah. that you read comes around, you acting nervous. But I'm like, you saying that you're not there for him, but you Why? get nervous when Uncle Phil shows up. Uh-huh, like caught. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you do give us, I'm doing something vintage, you know. So Uncle Phil makes a vital mistake. Yeah, he did. That he confronts Reed about the skit that he been doing to these up and coming artists, well, up and coming women artists. And of course that pisses Aunt, Vi Aunt Viv off because, okay, so you at this event because you think I'm trying to cheat on you? Yeah. And you don't trust me now? So I'm like, Aunt Uncle Phil, why didn't you approach Reed by himself? By himself. And be like, I see what you got going on. Right. That ain't the one. So now at this point, it's nothing else to do but to cut this little night short. Yeah. So we see them back <laughs> in, the hotel, in the hotel suite because Reed had got her a suite. Yeah. And when she was fixing that drink, I, did, I said, mm -mm, don't drink that. You need a sealed bottle because I don't trust Reed. I don't trust so Reed. They might got some roofies in there, man. Hello. You'd be like the hangover. You wake up and there's chickens and bowling pins in your room. <laughs> so long story short, her and Uncle Phil had a heart-to-heart -heart talk. And she reveals that her art makes her feel alive. Yeah. And it's not or what she, Reed says about her art, art makes, makes her, her feel, feel alive. alive. So it doesn't have anything to do with Reed. It's the... It's the appreciation for the thing that she loves the most, which now we know that she resents Uncle Phil because Uncle Phil provided a lifestyle that took her away Wait. from her art. Yeah. And now she's kind of mm. like mad and bitter and kind of acting out towards him because of it. And But I like what he told her. Though. That's it. Yeah, told her that, hey, 15 years ago, you were, I, matter of fact, Perfect. I was mesmerized by your art. I love going I to the events. You around. I love seeing you in the element. I was like, man, you sound like me. I like seeing my baby in her element, boy. That thing is sexy. Oh, we got to do the review. I'm yeah, sorry. We did. <laughs> yeah. So he was like, you were complaining and you were comparing yourself against other artists and you became insecure and you got burnt out. So in my fashion as being your husband, I gave you a, means a way out. out. And, and you ran through the door. Right. And I was like, yeah, I would have did the same thing if you were saying you was burnt out. I was like, I would have provided you a way out. So he it would say he so he was like, I'm not wasn't trying to pull you from art. I was rescuing you because you was insecure. And ain't that like us though? It's like that's why comparing yourself to other people is so dangerous. Because you can't focus on the greatness that you have and the people that's in your circle that appreciate your greatness. Mm -hmm. So then he was like, okay, so if I messed up 15 years ago, what was the conversation that yeah, I should have had with yeah. you? And basically she told him the conversation you should have had with me 15 years ago is, I got you. When you're ready to go back into it, I got you. So I was like, I hear what you're saying, yeah. Aviv. But at the same time, you have to understand how men communicate. They are rescuers. Rescuers, yeah. They are protectors. So when he saw that you was being burnt out, mm -hmm. that you were, he said you were tired before you even started. Right. When they see that and all they want to do is rescue. I've been married. I mean, I did it. I can really say we've been married. We'll be married 20 years in June. The queen had and a I have to be careful what I say around yeah. him. The queen has a Because he will, he will take it and he will make sure that whatever is plaguing me, mm -hmm. It's no more. Right. Because she had a job that was <laughs> yes. stressing her out. And I took her out. She yeah. only worked She only worked um, three days a week. Three days a week because of the stress. I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to let you continue to do that. Mm -hmm. It's stressing you out. So, yeah. 
Kudos to you, Uncle Phil, because I do it too. <laughs> I'm like, Uncle Phil, I get it. I get it. But what do we do now? Like, okay, yeah, how do we move forward? Yeah, how yeah. do we move forward with it? He didn't say the right words back then, but his intentions in his heart were pure and in good. In the right place, and, yeah. And in the right place. And at the same time, you're such a vocal person. <clears throat> at any time, I can imagine that if you said, hey, we're in a good place now. I want to go back and follow my first passion. I don't think for a shot of a doubt that he wouldn't have. But like she said, everybody else appreciates and keeps trying to push me back into my passion. Except for you. Except for you. And maybe it's because he be knows the price that that, that, yeah, that passion yeah. has on right. you. We don't want to go through that no more. So we don't want to push you back into your stress. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because she already doubting her artwork already. So she already insecure and she ain't even back in yet. Yeah, that's a so problem. the handwriting is really on the walls. Like, yeah. okay, why, why would he push you when you cur and, and currently insecure about that painting that Reed wanted to put that Reed put out on display in the last episode? Uh -huh. And if Uncle Phil is a Leo like we are Leos, I don't want to hear it no more. What you gonna yeah. do? So you gonna paint or not? <laughs> so he ended up saying, you know, let's take a ride down the coast, and she was like, no, I'm I want you to go. I, I want you to go home, and I'll be here, I, and I'm gonna rescue myself because. And that's going to lead into, like, Hillary. That's the advice she gave Hillary at the beginning of the episode, that sometimes you got to rescue yourself. We'll talk about that in a minute. So she ended up going back downstairs, and Reed was like, I thought she was in for the night. But she confirmed that she wants to move forward. So I'm like, okay, how this going to play out? Knowing that Reed is infatuated with your art and you, and, you. and I know you know it, so how this all gonna play out? I'm like, okay. You in a vulnerable state. Yeah. The only thing I can think of is that Jeffrey got some hills <laughs> waiting for this <laughs> waiting. for this ninja to make a move. You think Uncle Phil just gonna leave you and knowing that green eyes, the baby bandit, <laughs> the <laughs> under the bed bandit is still there? No, he's not. He's not. He's calculated. Alright, so like I said, uh at the beginning of the episode, um, Hillary is pissed off. Because Kylo took it upon himself to post the, uh, her video. Pastries after dark. Yeah, pastries after dark. And call it Thirsty Chef. So now she's in a panic because Kylo, the rules in the influencer's house, anything that's uploaded to the cloud. Recorded goes to the cloud. Goes to the cloud. And Kylo has the permission to do whatever he yeah. wants to do with it. So all episodes, she's been trying to contact him to take the post down. But he's ghosted her. So she was talking to Aunt Viv um, about, hey, I want, you know, daddy to help me with this. And she told her that, hey, maybe you need not daddy to rescue you this time. Maybe you need to rescue yourself because rescuing yourself is the best feeling in the world. And I was like, you hit it right on us. Yeah, yeah, when you rescue it, it, you know, it feels good when somebody else bailed you out or somebody got your back. But when you able to do it for yourself, oh, that's priceless. That's priceless. And so when Uncle Phil came downstairs, he was like, you know, what, 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 I, what can I help you with? And she was like, I'm good. I got it. I got it. <laughs> she was like, what was that all about? She said she's just trying to figure life out right now. She got it. She all right. So we see that Jazz came to the party. And we already knew that Hillary and Jazz had a connection when they was in the record shop. Mm -hmm. So Jazz come in. They talk. And in this episode, they end up kissing, which we, we saw it coming. But... Hillary tells, well, he tells her that, hey, I saw that Thirsty Chef video. That the don't seem thing. like that's you. you. She said, because it ain't. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm like, Hillary, at the same time, you did it, though. <laughs> yeah. You did, like, yeah, you did the video. Nobody made it up. You, you, really did, you might have posted it, but you recorded it. Yeah. So they end up talking. So she said, bet, I found out that Carlo, Carlo, Carlo is at this party. And I'm fitting to go roll up on him. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. You supposed to be watching over this party. You you can't, you, it's part of that will I'm throwing. You can't yeah. be going where Kylo is. So, of course, Jazz is like, I roll with you. I got your back. So, she gets there and confronts Kylo. And Kylo looks very genu genuine about his apology. I'm sorry, you know, I'm, I don't. you know, I just want to, you know, I like the shock value of posting. The algorithm is doing this thing. Look at the engagement on your post. She like, but this is not me. Mm -hmm. And then he tells her, well, Victoria's Secrets, you know, kind of throw it out there that they want to do a deal with you. And she was like, huh? Uh -huh. And I was like, here we go. And you can see Jazz was like. No, we wait, wait a minute. You've been talking all this ish that you confront him, that he gonna take your post down and all this, but now all of a sudden 
it's okay mm -hmm. because you might got a possible deal with Victoria's yeah. Secret. So she ended up going and meeting with them and coming back to Jazz and telling Jazz that, hey, uh, I got a deal with Victoria's Secret, $15,000 a post. So he was like, oh, so now we it's selling out. So <laughs> and she was like, well, I can come back to my to my base after I get my, but pretty much this is the time to secure the bag. Now I can come back to my to my base of people that I love and that I really want to cook for, and boom, I already secured my bag. I'm like, it don't work like that. Yeah, I don't. It don't work. And Jazz, it, and even Jazz don't know social media. He he knows it don't work like that. And but then so, she would try to talk down to him. I wouldn't expect you to understand. You, got you just got go. yeah. I was like, <laughs> don't do that. Yeah, yeah, don't do that to him. Now before Hillary left the influencer house. Remember old girl, the one that's, you know, kind of like sexually positive, open the and sex all Sex educator. Yeah. Did y'all see her like bagging up stuff from the tape, from the island? I said, she done picked up something of Hillary's that she has no business with. And that's going to come into play later. I promise you, I think mm. it is. I kept looking and I was like, is that your SD card? Is that your cord? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you putting too much in your bag, baby. Yeah. Something, something's up with that. So we already said last episode that that video that Hillary recorded is going to come back to bite her and it's going to come back to... And we, bite Uncle Phil. And bite Uncle Phil as well. But we still got to keep in mind of the video of when uh, Trey revealed why Will it's is in really Bel Air. So I think that's what's going to reveal the truth because it's going to come out through that. And that's how Lisa gonna find out that Will lied to her. <laughs> and how Uncle Phil's gonna lose. Yup. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot. It's gonna be a lot. But I enjoy, I am enjoying that. I'm highly, highly enjoying it, man. Uh -huh. So y'all get that in the comments, man. Let us know what y'all thought about this episode. And we're gonna see y'all next week. Peace.